let's talk about one-to-many relationships. So a one-to-many relationship is where there's two entities and there's many, many entities or many entities that map to the one entity. So for example, uh, you have a city and you have the people or persons who live in that city. So an example would be you know, New York City, right, which has 8 million people in it. Right, how are you going to model that? Well, we could kind of go through it and think about different ways you might want to do it. So uh, you might say, well, I'm going, to, I'm going to have a city collection. And in that city collection, I'm going to have the, the attributes of the city, like the name of the city and its area. And then I'm going to have uh, the, the people that live in the city as an array. All right? But that won't work because, of course, uh, there are way too many people uh, 8 million people and all their documents and all their information, you know, it isn't going to fit inside this. So uh, as a result, you can't do that. So you can say, well, I'll flip it on its head. So instead I could say, well, I'm going to have a people collection, all right? And the people collection in each document, uh, I'm going to have a name like Andrew. And then I'm going to have a uh, city. And that's going to be another document. And it's going to have a name like New York and an area and everything else. Now the problem with this design is that if there are obviously multiple people living in New York, so what I've done is I've duplicated this data in multiple documents, which is going to open, open me up to inconsistencies because uh, I have to keep it updated, uh, the, the city information updated across all the people who live in the city. Now in certain designs that might be acceptable, but I, I probably wouldn't recommend it in general. So given that, you know, what's the best way to do it? Well, in this case, where there truly is one to many, one one city with many people, you know, the the, the best way to do it is probably to use true linking. All right. So we'll use true linking. So for true linking, we're going to have a people collection, and in that people collection, we're going to have something like the name of the person, like Andrew. And then probably my uh, my city, which let's assume that the city names are, are unique, uh, New York City being unique, and other attributes about me. And then in the city collection, I would have an underscore ID being New York City and other attributes about the city listed out. So in this case, I would I would link from the item where there was many. I would sort of have a collection of the many. The, the people, and I would link into the one, into the city. And again, you no, know, we have no foreign key constraints. You have to make sure that you're consistent about it and that you don't put a, a city in that isn't also an underscore ID for the collection that it refers to. So that's a fine solution for one to many, uh, and it requires two collections. So that requires two collections. All right. But what if it isn't one to many, but instead it's one to few, which is still a one-to-many relationship, but is actually a lot easier to model inside MongoDB. So the example I gave you before was these blog posts and the comments. And you saw when we went over the, the, the schema for the, for the blog that there are multiple uh, comments that go to one blog post, but it isn't very many of them. So it's blog posts, sorry, to comment. There's you know one of these and maybe you know ten of these, and so in that case, it's it's feasible to have a collection of the one, so to have a post collection, which is what we did, and then to with, within each post, right, you had the name of the posts, and then somewhere you had an array of the comments, and then that array contained all the comments, but there's only a few of them for each post. And, and again, we don't have the duplication of data problem because uh, you know, every comment is only within a single post. So in this particular model, uh, it works very well to have a single collection, and we're going to have a single collection of the, of the one of the posts, and then put the many embedded. So those are the two different ways to handle the one-to-many relationship, depending on whether it's one-to-few or one-to-many. If it's truly one-to-many, then two collections works, works best with linking. And if it's just one-to-few, well, then you could probably get away with a single collection, like we did with, with in the blogging example, where you just embed the items within it. All right, so it's time for a quiz. So when is it recommended? to represent a one-to-many relationship in multiple collections? And the answers are always, whenever the many is large, 
whenever the many is actually few or never? What's the answer? 